Hello, I'm Chase Petty. The presentation I'll be giving today is part of a larger presentation on sustainability in construction in which I collaborated with Walker Moore, Jay Mimma, and Joshua Hardaway. Today I will be particularly talking about social sustainability in construction. Most people when they think about sustainability think in environmental terms. They think of environmental sustainability, environmental efficiency, in other words, they only think environmentally. Sustainability is about more than that. Sustainability is really about having a positive effect over the long term and maintaining those positive effects and can be broken down into three pillars. The first pillar and the one that I will be discussing today is the social pillar and that's how, how sustainability relates to the people both users of a building and the members of a community around a building. Next, we have environmental sustainability, the second pillar, which will be discussed by my colleague Walker Moore. And thirdly, we have the economic pillar of sustainability, which will be discussed in greater detail by my colleague, Jay Mimon. These three pillars work together to create sustainability, and if you remove any one of the three, the building is not likely to be sustainable. Next, I'll be discussing why construction is different from other products. So what we produce in the construction industry is differentiated from other products by its longevity, its complexity, and its scale. Construction projects differ in longevity from other products in that the usable life of a construction product or building is generally at least 25 years, if not 50 years, or even 100 years. There are few, if any, other products that you use for this long. And so sustainability, as it, as it pertains to the life cycle of a product, uh, or a construction project, is especially important. Secondly, construction projects differ from other products in their complexity. <clears throat> While many products may only have one or a few users, construction projects generally have many users, such as in office buildings, community centers, or other buildings in which um, the building is being used for many purposes by many different people. It's also more complex in the sense of um, the people that come together to build it. If you've ever observed or been on a construction site, you know that there are many crews that come in to do many different jobs in the building of a, of a construction project, and oftentimes those have to work together. So sustainability in this space is also very important. Thirdly, construction projects differ in the scale as opposed to other products in that construction projects are the largest things that we as people tend to build, with the exception maybe of things like aircraft carriers or shipping, shipping ships. Next we'll be discussing a couple of, uh, of case study models, um, <clears throat> namely the Nakagan Tower building in Tokyo, Japan as seen on the left of this slide, and Habitat 67 in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, as seen on the right of this slide. Mostly, both of these two buildings are prefab buildings built around the same time, but we'll be comparing them to see why one was, was markedly more successful than the other. For my research findings, again, I will be specifically talking about social sustainability. To begin talking about social sustainability, I would like to again define it as being as sustainability relates to people. Um, now this can include users of a building, such as uh, workers that use a building for office space, tenants of an apartment building, as well as the community around a building, people living in the neighborhood, people who work in adjacent buildings, people who, who, who just live and work around, around a building. Now, social sustainability has some distinguishing factors that separate it from the other two types of sustainability. <clears throat> One distinguishing factor is that social sustainability is generally seen as being a bit more of a softer science or a, uh, a more psychological in nature rather than relying on quantitative data and, uh, and, and statistics. Social sustainability relates to 
how a building interacts with people. And so it, 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 it falls on such psychological concepts as meeting things like Maslow's hierarchy of needs and, uh, uh, um, and other motivational theories to, to produce the best response in a person um, to allow them to have the most positive interactions with the building. Social sustainability can be broken down into three general types. Development sustainability, bridge sustainability, and maintenance sustainability. Development sustainability has to do um, with how we think about sustainability when we're developing or designing a building. Things like um, things incorporated into the design, um, basically when, when, when we're producing it. It's, it's really the, the, the sustainability that's thought of on the front end. Next we have bridge sustainability, which is how we sustain, um, which is how we maintain those sustainable effects as our need changes. Um, one example of this is historical buildings being repurposed um, from what may have originally been a library or a town meeting hall into something more social like a meeting space or, or a, uh, a bar. And the third type is maintenance sustainability. Maintenance sustainability basically has to do with how we keep the effect um, that we initially designed and implemented into a building going. If a building is sustainable initially um, in all three areas, but, but soon uh, begins becoming less effective in its environmental sustainability or its social sustainability or its economic sustainability, um, and that those effects are not maintained, then overall that building was not sustainable. Remember, sustainability is concerned with the long run. Sustainability, social sustainability can also be broken down, as I've said before, into internal and external factors. Those internal factors have to do with the people that live, reside in, work in, and, and are the primary users of a building. This is important because um, if a person is not having their needs met um, for their workspace or, or their uh, living space, then they're going to be less productive. And that begins to affect the other areas of sustainability. Um, such as the economic viability. Um, my colleague, Jay Mimon, will talk about that a little bit later. External factors have to do with how a building interacts with its community. Um, these will include things like uh, light pollution and sound pollution, um, like will be discussed by my colleague, Walker Moore, <clears throat> and, and they have to do with how a building interacts with, with people outside of the building. Um, if it's going to cause problems for the outside community, or it's going to um, change things like traffic flow, make the area harder to, ex to access, then that's going to affect the overall sustainability of the building as well. Next, we can break down social sustainability into physical and non-physical factors. Um, while the construction industry primarily handles the physical factors, um, such as things like the amount of sunlight, the amount of artificial light, the amount of airflow, um, and the amount of access to natural spaces, um, we, have to, we have to be aware of these physical factors affect on the non-physical. So the non-physical factors of social sustainability are things like um, whether or not community interaction is, is uh, allowed for, whether or not uh, coworkers are able to collaborate um, with each other or interact with their bosses or subordinates. Um, so to, to put it a little bit more concisely, we as constructors need to consider the non-physical factors when planning for the physical factors so that we can facilitate a conducive working environment and a productive working environment. Next we'll be looking specifically at the Nakagan uh, Tower and Habitat 67 um, as they pertain to social sustainability. Now the Nakagan Tower was built in Tokyo, Japan and consists of this central tower with a bunch of pods on the outside, each connected with four anchor bolts. It's a really interesting pro project, having been only built in 30 days, um, but the problem with each of the pods was that they were rather small, generally speaking only 13 feet by 8 feet, much too small for a person to live in. So to put it simply, nobody wanted to live there, not very sustainable. Observing Habitat 67, um, we can see there's a bit more space in each of the units. Generally speaking, each space had 600 to 2300 square feet of space. 
um, with much more access to things like sunlight, natural greenery, um, and I believe it was even built right next to a river for access to even more natural space. Next, I'll be talking about why sustainability matters overall and as it relates to social sustainability. So while my colleague Walker Moore will be talking more about the environmental impact with things like emissions, it's important to note that buildings account for over 40% of total emissions and that 10 to 20% of these emissions are due to the construction process. If we can think about that um, and the social impact that those emissions are going to have, by reducing the amount of emissions in the construction process, and later on, um, <clears throat> then we will then then we will be a bit better off. From a more social standpoint, and why it matters to me as a future member of the construction industry, um, uh, we need to think about the sustainability of the construction industry, namely um, due to its its breadth that it's active globally. Um, and is one of the, the largest employers in the world um, with 1.7 million construction employees just in the U.S. alone, not to mention worldwide. And $531 billion in annual revenue just in the United States. When we consider these, other, these social factors, which would be internal, um, we see why sustainability in the long run is important. We need to be able to maintain the viability of the construction industry Secondly, um, the government has changed, many governments worldwide are changing how they view sustainability, and so the construction industry needs to adapt as well. Many, many nations are moving towards um, more sustainable design and to sustainable construction. Um, for example, Germany is going to be moving for climate neutrality by the year 2050, meaning that they will be having no impact on the environment by 2050, or no negative impact, and that the UK will be reducing emissions by 80% by 2050. With that governmental additional interest comes additional regulation that can be expected in years to come. Moving more into the external aspects of, of social sustainability, public opinion is also very important. The demand for sustainable products is increasing as well as the private sector responding to that. The way that people want their buildings built is changing and so we must adapt to that. By 2024, Amazon pledges that 80% of the energy use will be renewable. And we have to remember that sustainability is beginning to equal value. People are wanting to know um, that the, our construction activity is viable in the long run. Right, and then here are some of the references that all of us use for our presentation. So I'll share them with you, and I will thank you for your time.